Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and today I'm talking about the animated opening for Sonic Dream Team that just released. And I've got a lot to say about it, so let's not waste any more time and get into it. First off, I just gotta say I love the art style used here, because of course every Sonic animation has its own art style, and this is no different, and I love the one used here. It just, it looks great, and I actually in particular love how the eyes look. They look very detailed, I think that's great. And I also have to commend them for this, this definitely feels a lot higher budget than the Superstar stuff. Those animations were very good, don't get me wrong, but straight up in the opening, there is just a lot of genuine just animation flaws that like just genuinely bad looking stuff. Like it was still a good animation and you know, I can't be upset at getting a free animation. Like, you know, I can't be upset about it, but it still was not as good as what we had seen before, but we are definitely back to high quality Sonic animations because this, it just looks great, really. Like everything is so smooth. Like there's no like rough moments. It doesn't feel like there's a point where it's like, oh, that looks kind of weird or that looks kind of bad. No, everything feels very cohesive and just looks great together. But looking at the animation, this definitely gives us some story cues that I kind of want to talk about, a theory that I have on what this story is going to look like. So at the beginning of the animation, you can see that everyone is floating in this gray void. I'm not sure what to exactly call it, but that's definitely what it is. But what I noticed is that when everyone comes into the world full of color, all their eyes are shut, except Sonic. He's actually the only one who appears to be conscious during this. But once they get into this colorful world, you can immediately notice it isn't all that normal and is definitely being manipulated by Eggman. So putting the pieces together, my theory is that Eggman actually puts everyone to sleep and then they wake up in this dream that he has control over. But since they're in this dream world, Eggman can just summon a giant badnik out of nowhere if he wants. And that's why I think Badnik's return in this. And oh boy, before I get onto anything else, I gotta talk about the music. The music in this trailer just goes so hard. I like how once they get into the colorful world, it starts off with the chord progression. It doesn't slam us straight into the melody, which I really like, cause that comes in a little later, but I appreciate how that's done. because it gives a sense of repetition throughout the song because you get to hear that chord progression by itself in the beginning. Of course, you know, you've got guitar flares and extra stuff, but it's mainly just the chord progression. So once that chord progression gets into your mind a couple times, then the melody comes in. And then that chord progression is just kind of there in the background, but you've already heard it, so you kind of already know where the song is going. And that's actually the way that I construct a lot of the music I make. Of course, I don't release a ton of music, and I'm no, you know, I don't really consider myself of a music artist at all, but I definitely know my two cents about music, and I think that this is a cool way to open it. And boy, I just gotta really say, all of the melodies here are like outstanding. They are very memorable. Like straight up listening to this thing one time, I can almost memorize the entire melody. It is that catchy. And I don't know who's writing this music, and I don't believe that it's actually T. Lopes, but it feels very inspired by his kind of writing. So yeah, I don't know who's doing the music, but they are doing a great job, whoever that is. So all this leads into my next point. This doesn't feel like a mobile game. In none of the advertisement does it feel like it's a mobile game at all. If you had just told me this was a console game and the footage they were showing was just the Switch version, I would totally believe you. And that is impressive. I have to tip my hat off to them for that. And it's kind of crazy to me how they're just treating this as if it's the next big Sonic game. And it's just, you would never see that. Legitimately, the only reason this looks like a mobile game is because Sega Hardlight is the ones developing it. And it says at the end of the trailer, it's for Apple Arcade. If I did not know those two things, like I said, you could completely fool me this was Switch footage. And the fact that they're willing to give it an animations is just it's just great like you can tell they're definitely putting you know they're they're 
putting some dollars down for this. I'm sure Apple bribed them a little bit, but still, this is great. So yeah, to wrap everything up, of course, I, I just love this animation. It's great. So please, I invite you to tell me your thoughts on this animation down below. Did you like it? Were there parts that you maybe didn't like? Do you have some criticisms of it? Because I don't really have any. So if you have any criticisms of this, I would love to hear them. One last thing before I wrap up. I actually have a Twitter and uh, you guys can go follow me on there if you want. I guess I'm kind of funny sometimes. I don't know. So yeah, I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a good day. Goodbye. That's